In this lesson, we're going to see how we can solve rational equations. A rational equation is simply an equation that contains fractions. Often those fractions contain variables in the numerator and or in the denominator. I'll show you a trick today that you can use to help you solve these equations. We begin by using everything we know about finding common denominators. As we look at the fractions, we see that the common denominator will be 6. We multiply the first fraction by 3 over 3 and the last fraction by 2 over 2. When we do this, we now have common denominators. We have 3y over 6 plus 5 over 6 equals negative 2y. Now, all we have to do is write a simple equation from what we have. We look at the numbers in the numerator and the signs in between them. Here, 3y plus 5 equals negative 2y. That's the equation that we'll solve. We'll just ignore the denominator. We solve that and we find out that y equals negative 1. Now, it seems strange that we're ignoring the denominator, didn't it? Well, because we ignored the denominator, we actually got an answer that's really only a possible solution. In order to see if this solution actually works, you have to plug it in and see if it actually works out. You can do a check either by hand or by using a calculator. When you do your check, remember to check in the original equation. In this case, plug negative 1 into the y over 2 plus 5 over 6 equals negative y over 3. No matter how you do your check in this case, you find out that it does work, and so the solution to the equation is y equals negative 1. The second example is just like that. In this example, we want to find a common denominator and then solve the numerator. Please use example 1 as your guide. Pause the video here and try example 2. Let's see how you did. We began by getting a common denominator. Our common denominator is 60. Now, what we do is we simply look at the numbers on the top. We write our equation and we solve that to get x equals 60. We know that this is only a possible solution because we ignored the denominator. We'll then have to do a check, whether it be by hand or using the calculator. When we do our check, we find that the solution x equals 60 does work, and so x equals 60 is the solution to my equation. Next, let's take a look at example 4. Example 4 is at least slightly more interesting. Here we have binomials in the numerator. Notice we have an a plus 6 and a 2a minus 4. The strategy is the same. Let's get a common denominator. So we'll multiply our first fraction by 2 over 2, and we'll multiply the 12 by 4 over 4. This gives us a common denominator of 4. We now have 2a plus 12 over 4, plus 2a minus 4 over 4, equals 48 over 4. Once we've found our common denominator, we simply look at everything that's on the top, plus the operators in between. We use that in order to write our equation, 2a plus 12 plus 2a minus 4 equals 48. We then solve the equation, and when we do that, we find out that a equals 10. As before, because we ignored the denominator, we have to go ahead and check our solution, because a equals 10 is simply a, positive, a possible solution, not necessarily an, a good solution. So we do our check, and we find out that it does work. Example 5 is a little bit interesting as well. Here we have some binomials in the denominator. When you have binomials in the denominator, we use the same exact process that we used before. We simply factor the denominators, and we look for the pieces and the parts that each one is missing. Our first fraction has a 2y plus 3 and a 2y minus 3. Our second fraction has a 2y minus 3 but it needs a 2y plus 3. The last fraction has a 2y plus 3 already. It needs a 2y minus 3. Now that I know what each fraction needs, I can go ahead and find common denominators. Once I've written that, I go ahead, I utilize the numerators and the operators in between them, and I write my equation, 2 plus 2y plus 3 equals 3 times 2y minus 3. 
I go ahead and I solve the equation, I find out that y equals 7 over 2. Again, this is a possible solution I have to check to see if it actually works. Whether you do the check by hand or you do it on the calculator, you'll find out that the solution does work, and therefore y equals 7 halves is a valid solution to our equation. The final example, number 6, is for you to try. Begin by factoring the denominators and then finding common denominators. Once you have your common denominator, go ahead, write your equation, solve it, and then check to see if your solution is valid. Please pause the video here and then come on back once you've finished. Let's see how you did. We began by factoring each of the denominators and found that the first one is x plus 2x plus 5 and the other two did not factor. The second fraction needs an x plus 5 and the third fraction needs an x plus 2. Once I did that, I wrote my equation 9 equals 5 times x plus 5 minus 3 times x plus 2. I went and solved my equation and I got x equals negative 5 as a possible solution. When I did my check, however, I noticed that I had a problem. When I substitute in the negative 5, I end up with some fractions that have a 0 in the denominator. 9 over 0 is undefined and therefore the solution does not provide a valid answer to this equation. I reject the solution that I came up with and there's no solution to this equation. So here's what you need to know. When you're solving a rational equation, find a common denominator. Begin by going through, finding those common denominators, and then use the numerator and the operators in between. Once you've done that, solve the equation. That will give you possible solutions. Remember to check for extraneous solutions so that you don't have a reject that you accept. Once you've done that, you have your solution to the equation and you're all set to go. That's everything you need to know about solving rational equations.